Six minutes how to master the autopilot for the TBM 930. Here we go, Captain. This is the last video of our tutorial series about the G3000. Congratulations if you followed the complete course, but if you didn't, feel free to check our other videos about that. It might answer some questions on the plane's configuration and setup. Enough talking. Let's dive into the video. Today we will focus on this big panel. Let's first enable the autopilot clicking the AP button. As we didn't define any instruction to the autopilot, it will maintain the current pitch and roll of the aircraft until new instructions. Speaking of instructions, let's define a heading. This big rotary knob will allow you to select a heading. Change can be monitored on the HSI by the blue marker. Let's take a heading of 060 for today. Once set, click the HDG button to engage heading selection. The plane starts to turn and will continue until a heading of 060. On the FMA, you can verify HDG in green, meaning everything is working as expected. The plane now follows a heading. Let's give it an altitude. First, select the desired altitude using this big knob. Change can be monitored on top of the altimeter. Second, the plane needs to know at which rate it should climb. To do that, set a vertical speed clicking the VS button, then increase or decrease the rate of climb using this wheel. As always, you can monitor your change on top of the variometer. Let's take a look at the FMA to confirm our modifications. The FMA tells us the plane will climb at 1200 feet per minute, then will stabilize at the selected altitude, which is 11,000 feet. Using the vertical speed requires you to know the aircraft's performance, which can be tricky for beginner pilots. If you don't want to mess with vertical speed, you can also climb or descent using the FLC function. In this mode, the plane will pitch the aircraft to maintain a desired speed. As you may have noticed, the TBM doesn't have auto throttle, so do not forget to increase power when doing it. In order to avoid confusion, the autopilot will not increase or decrease power to maintain the selected speed. It will only pitch more or less the aircraft so that it climbs at this specific speed. You can increase or decrease the selected speed using the VS wheel. Okay, so now you know how to give a heading and an altitude to the aircraft. Let's dive into more complicated functionalities like VNAV and LNAV. Let's imagine we have a flight plan in the onboard computer and we want the autopilot to follow it. To do that, press the NAV button, but as you can see, nothing happens. It's normal as you need to merge the aircraft toward the flight path. From our navigation display, we can see a heading of 090 should send us directly to the flight path. Let's take a heading of 090 and watch the airplane merging to the route. A quick observation, and we see the flight plan is in white, meaning it's not active yet. We will probably intercept the leg between Luigi and Hanna, so we need to activate it. To do that, go to the onboard computer, then select flight plan. Search for Hanna, then click activate leg to waypoint. The leg now turns in magenta, meaning it's active. Let's fast forward until we cross the route. Please take a look at the FMA. The plane is currently in heading mode in green, and is waiting to cross for the navigation route, as shown by the white FMS. We are now intercepting the route. HDG just disappeared, FMS became green, and the plane is turning. It will now follow this route until the end of the flight plan or further instructions. And that's it for the lateral navigation. Now let's talk about vertical navigation. We are currently on the arrival, and we can see the top of descent on the navigation display. We want the airplane to descent automatically, and follow the arrival path. To do that, first set the desired altitude, in our case, 6,000 feet. Then click the VNAV button. VNAV is now engaged, as shown on the FMA. The plane will maintain its current altitude until it reaches the top of descent. Let's fast forward. A couple of miles from the TOD, you should hear a vertical track while the VNAV path pops up on the primary flight display. Reaching the top of descent, the FMA switch to V-path and the plane starts descending. In that configuration, the plane will follow the lateral and vertical flight plan. Let's now fast forward to the final approach leg and catch the ILS with the autopilot. We are now approaching the runway. First, be sure to place your aircraft correctly and below the ILS glide slope. Second, go to the communication panel and set the correct ILS frequency. On this runway, 
it's 110.75. Third switch back to the PFD menu and set source to NAV1. Now look outside, and if everything is correct, you should see the HSI course aligned with the runway axis. Last but not least, click the APR button to engage the automatic catch of the ILS. On the FMA, monitor HDG in green and lock in white, meaning the plane will maintain selected heading and catch the localizer as soon as it's crossing it. We are now approaching the runway axis. Look on the FMA, switching from heading to localizer mode, and the plane starts turning. A couple of seconds later, we can see the glide slope diamond coming closer and closer to the center. Check again the FMA and monitor the change from altitude hold to glide slope. Congratulations, the plane is all set for the approach. Do not forget to decrease airspeed during the descent. When reaching the white arc, increase flaps to landing configuration, as well as lowering the landing gear. Adjust the throttle to match the landing reference speed, which is a green circle on the airspeed indicator. Please remember, this plane is not Autoland equipped, so you would have to take manual control on short final. And that sums up this tutorial about the TBM Autopilot. I hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Happy landings, Captain!